Well, good evening, everyone. It's good to be here as usual, and um, recording. Well, good to, uh, to share God's word with you, and uh, that's what we want to do. And this uh, message tonight is a short message. It's about a simple prayer, and uh, and the title of our message is called a criminal's prayer. And uh, the text is taken from uh, Luke 23, verse 32 and 33, and then we'll jump over to verse 39 to 43. So starting at verse 32. There were also two others, <coughs> criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then we go to verse 39. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God, seeing that you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. May God add his blessings to these words. Now, from this scripture that I just read, these verses, um, we know that there was two criminals, one on each side of them. And, uh, but let's talk a bit about these two fellows, uh, especially one of them, the one who repented from his sins. And uh, one of these criminals was not repentant. He was not sorry for his sins. And he totally rejected and he disrespected Jesus for who he was and his purpose on the cross. And in verse 39, it tells us that one of these criminals mocked Jesus, saying if, if he were the Messiah, he could save himself and save them. Well, now, let's think about this for a second. These two fellows on the, on the cross beside Jesus, they were criminals. They were there because they had broken the law. And, and they had done bad, sinful uh, deeds. And one of them pointed out that, that they deserved to be punished and to die for their sins. But you see, Jesus, who had never sinned, who is perfect, didn't, desire, didn't deserve to die publicly on a cross as he did. Well, as it happened, one of these two men turned to Jesus with his very sincere plea. And he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. You know, that, that shows us that... Um, that he believed, he believed in who Jesus claimed to be and, that, and, and of his own sinfulness and his need of forgiveness. And what did Jesus say to him? He said, I assure you, which means I promise you, I assure you that this day you will be with me in paradise. Now, today you will be with me in paradise. This is one of the most beautiful, precious promises that's recorded in the Bible. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus saying that to us? Today you will be with me in paradise. See, this criminal, he knew and he confessed his sinfulness and his total inability to do anything about it. Just, just think, what could he do? He was nailed to a cross. See, this man was unable to go to a temple and, and, and pray. It was impossible for him to fold his arms or, uh, or, or lift his hands in prayer. It was impossible for him to go to a quiet place and pray. So what could he possibly do in the situation that we, he was in? Well, his one and only chance was to pray, to pray where he was at that time. And he was hanging there on the cross, nearly naked on the cross. And his other option was to die in his sin and be separated from God forever in hell, for all eternity. But now here is a lesson for us on prayer. See, God is spirit, and when we, in this world, when we worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we must pray with all sincerity from our hearts, and, and, and in total faith, knowing that God hears us, and totally believing in him and in his word. And it would be unwise for us to, uh, you know, wait uh, until we're in a sad and desperate uh, circumstances as as this fellow found himself in either one of those criminals. But you see, 
we can learn from this fellow's experience. We can learn that it can help us in our lives today also. Because first of all, we see that this man, this criminal was in a very desperate and pitiful situation, you might say. Here he was, he's nailed to a cross, no possible way of escaping. He knew that death was soon awaiting him. He didn't know exactly when, but he knew it was bound to happen in the very near future. And one can tell by his, his conversation with the other criminal that he believed in God, to whom he was going to have to answer too soon. And we read in verse 40 of our text that he rebuked the other fellow by saying to him, Do you not even fear God? See, he was making it known to the other man that their death on the cross was a result of their crime that they had committed. See, he had a belief in the future life, and, and he was aware of being unprepared for the future. And that's why he said in verse 42, he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This was his prayer to Jesus. Yes, this man was hanging there completely helpless. There was no good works that he could do or perform that would help him. There was no amount of money that he could offer, because he had none. There was no church or religious ceremony that, that he could attend. He had no way of getting cleaned up or getting nicely dressed. One might say, well, in, in the eyes of all men, in the, you know, in the reality of his situation, he was doomed for all, he was doomed for time and for all eternity. So secondly, what did this man do? Well, he offered a desperate plea to pardon. And he said to Christ on the cross beside him in verse 42, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. See, somehow this dying criminal, he was aware of the innocence and the perfection of Jesus. And that is why he says in the last part of verse 41, he said to the other criminal, this man has done nothing wrong. And just before that, he, he, in that same verse, he had said, we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. And then he said, this man has done nothing wrong. See, this man made no, no attempt to explain or excuse or to cover his sin in any way. He just made a public confession of his faith in the presence of Christ, who was, who was being crucified beside him. And this fellow didn't make any eloquent speech. He didn't fancy, use fancy words or anything. Rather, he spoke in a very short and very simple prayer. In verse 32, he said, and this was his prayer, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, in this simple prayer, he spoke to Jesus as if he were a king. He said, Lord. And he prayed to him as if he were God. He said, your kingdom. And this man's prayer was a simple short sentence of nine words yet it saved his soul forever. Praise God. See, this man's plea was, was humble in that he only requested to be remembered. He didn't ask to be spared death or to be relieved of his physical pain that he was in, but he just asked to be remembered by Jesus. And, and it's easy to notice that this fellow's prayer was utterly sincere, and he, he was an accused sinner on the edge of eternity. In other words, he was soon to be dead. And we can notice that, the, that his prayer was courageous because he publicly identified himself with Christ and by his conversation with the other criminal, he expressed his con condemnation of those who were executing Christ. Well, now thirdly, what would happen? Well, this criminal received a very precious promise from Jesus and also in a very short and simple sentence in verse 33, as we've read already, Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. See, by this precious promise, Jesus was assuring him that he was willing and he was ready and he was able to meet this man's deepest need, his need of forgiveness and his salvation forever for his soul. And Jesus was assuring him that life doesn't end just in physical death. Jesus was promising him that the privilege of a continuing fellowship with him after death. And Jesus was promising him the entry into his heavenly home immediately when physical death occurs. And that's why he said, today, today you will be with me in paradise. 
Paul also reminds us in, in the book of 2 Corinthians 5, 8, Paul says, we are confident yet well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So Jesus' promise to the criminal on the cross beside him on that, as we call it nowadays, Good Friday, shows us today that salvation comes the moment, the moment of trust and total surrender and at whatever time and wherever we are in life. And though, you know, it's not advisable to wait as long as, as this fellow did because we don't know if, we don't know when our death will occur. So we don't know if our hearts will be ready at that time. The Bible tells us, behold, today is the day of, of the salvation. So we shouldn't put it off till tomorrow or next week or, or, or six months from now. But we should make a decision to repent, to repent of our sins and commit our lives to follow Christ. And when we do this, we, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be a, you know, a fancy prayer or anything. You just simply come to, come to Christ and you, you come, ask Jesus to come into your heart and use your own words. Don't have to use anybody else's formal prayer or anything. Just speak to Jesus and know that he hears you and ask him to come into your heart. And so in conclusion here, let's say that both, both men that were on the cross beside Jesus they, they had a chance to be saved. Both of them did. One accepted. One accepted God's free gift of salvation. The other rejected it. Now, you and I, we also have that same chance, that same offer of salvation for our souls by accepting Christ, his sacrifice on the cross, so that we too may enter someday if, into heaven with him. And we're told this in 1 John Chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And it reads, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son, and he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. See, all of us, all of us here, all of us in the world, in one way or another, we're like the criminals that were on the cross. They both had sinned, and you know what? We too. We too have sinned. And we are born with a sinful nature. We're born that way. And the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, all means everyone. Well, you might say, well, we're all doomed to hell then. And, and yeah, I guess you could say that. But then later on in Romans 5.8, we're told, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We don't have to get all cleaned up and get good and nicely dressed and, and, become, and try to become good. But that isn't going to work. We come to, to Christ where we are at the time where, you know, we don't have to wait till later. We just come. And so when we hear or read of this amazing event that, that happened on that uh, that, that day many years ago, it's like a picture that speaks to us. And it's a picture that encourages us to believe in Christ, to believe in Christ's death on the cross, his sacrifice for us. And it's a, an invitation to accept God's unmerited grace. We didn't deserve this, but out of his love, his grace, and we respond to him with our hearts. So the criminal's prayer, it, it's a good example for every sinner, and that's all of us, that God loves us. God loves us, and he does hear us. He hears our simplest prayer. May God bless you. I think we have time for another song or two.